Hello, everybody. If you can hear the sound of my voice, maybe you could make some sort of a gesture, keep it clean. I see some hands going up. That's good. Don't have a lot of choices for that. Um, and yes, Melissa can hear, so we're good to go. We're good to go. RPR. What is it? Why do you want it? What can it do for you? Um, that's what I intend to cover today. And there are lots of different features with RPR. Um, I don't use many of them. And so that's because there are better alternatives. I'm going to discuss that. I'm going to, I'm not telling you that this is the only way to use RPR. I'm just going to show you what I do with it and why I think it's important and a useful program. All right, that's sort of the thing. Now, if I were going to, like, first of all, if you're new to this, you might want to start by going in the upper right hand corner where it either has your picture or it does not. And if your picture is not in the top right hand corner, it means you haven't filled out your profile. And if you click on that and you go to profile, well, you're going to see your profile and you can put in your picture. Your broker usually has to upload the broker's logo, right? Changing the logo, I don't even know if you can do that. Um, my broker doesn't want you to be changing the address and stuff like that, nobody really cares. Uh, it's not a requirement that an address be on things, not by the Department of Real Estate. If it really bothers you, I can show you how to, you know, how to get rid of it. Um, if you have a website, now I have my website, I think someplace, but it's only something that gets printed out. So if I wanted to do this, www.michaeldevlin.com, right? And I guess it would put it on my website someplace. Uh, on the reports and things like that, not a big deal. Um, when you you need to make sure your MLS is connected, mine is connected. Now you'll notice there's two things connected. One of them is the name of my MLS. The other one is a program that some of you may never have heard of before called CREXI. Now RPR actually has a, um, a bunch of tools that are really designed for commercial real estate. And you can even kind of sort of do searches for properties, commercial properties that are for sale. Now, most commercial properties are not in the MLS, right? If they're in the MLS, you could find them in the MLS. Crexy is a website where people can post their commercial properties, and that's the site that powers the commercial search. You would make sure your license number is there, put in your designations, uh, whatever, right? Now, you'll also notice as I go down the right, it's got my NRDS number. If you don't know your NRDS number, you, you kind of want to know it because you're going to want to connect RPR to, well, other apps. And as we scroll down, time zone is pretty self-explanatory. Notice mine says under connected apps, zip forms. Now, I'm going to show you maybe maybe an example of why we would do that, right? And if you were going to, I'll do it now. Let's say you have a listing appointment. Now, there's a program called MLS Connect, which would import information from your MLS into zip forms so you don't have to fill it out all the time. Right, you don't have to type in the listing agent's name, and it's not perfect, but it would import the APN number and the address and a whole bunch of stuff from the MLS. So first, that only works if the listing is in your MLS. Um, one person is saying you can't hear every um, everyone else can. Right, so I'm just letting her know that. Um, if you can't hear, text it. But right now, I think it's, I don't think it's a me problem. That's all I'm saying, right? If many people can hear it. So MLS Connect, which by far works better than the other programs, only works, one, if the property that you are wanting to import the information from is on the MLS. And number two, it has to be your MLS. 
So my MLS is MLS listings, but if the property is in an MLS like uh, Metro List, right? It could be in San Jose, but it was listed by some carpetbagger from Sacramento or something like that. Well, then it's not going to work. It only will import things that are in my MLS. The other downside of MLS Connect is it only has to do with things that are in the MLS. So if I have a listing appointment and I would like to import some of the information from the county records directly into my zip forms account, how would I do that? And the answer is RPR will do that. Now you'll see that mine says it's already linked. Yours may say something else. You're gonna to have to link it. And what will you need in order to link it? You're gonna to need to know your NRDS number. And if you don't know what your NRDS number is and you don't know how to find it, go to Google and type in, how do I find my NRDS number? Just try that. Now, there are some of these that I don't use anymore, but anyhow, notice all my RPR mobile access. Uh, of these, I have a, a Chromebook, which I take with me when I'm on appointments. My uh, phone is a Google 6. Some of these are older, older ones that I don't really need anymore, but I've connected RPR to my cell phone. RPR has a mobile app, which is one of the apps you really ought to have on your phone. I, and I make, I don't know, we may, I don't know if we're gonna get to that. Um, and then there's an ad, right, from, I don't know, EXP sponsor. So you're gonna wanna do that, right? Make sure that your picture, you like your picture. Um, if you go to settings, uh, yeah, save changes. If you go to settings, there's not a lot that you can do, right? I mean, there are some different things. I can enter market areas, but I don't really know what that does for me. Um, I really didn't change very much of this. All right, so let's say you're done. You've made your profile look good. All right, let me see if I can go back. Is it spinning around? I don't know, it's not spinning around. That might make it spin. All right. Oh, all right. So what would I use RPR for? Well, lots of different things. Probably the best use of RPR, in my opinion, is to do a CMA on the property. And if we were to and notice there's a residential and a commercial button, right? So if you're doing something, it would have to be residential. And what you can do is, let me see, are any of these, Derry and Cochran, uh, we need uh, Valencia, San Clemente. This is something I'm not necessarily, I don't think this is on the market. Um, yes, it is. It's on the market, but let me see. I'll find one that I know is not on the market. Click here. Notice it shows me this one, I think is not on the market. Yes. How do I know it's not on the market? Well, look at the picture, right? That's sort of a giveaway, right? Because it's a Google photo and as opposed to a, um, you know, an MLS photo. Right, and there's some guy waving, you know, it's a, a, a nice house. So let's say I was going to go on a listing appointment at, on this property. Um, what I would do, first of all, what my suggestion is that if the property is in your MLS, you also want to look at what are the MLS records for doing a market analysis in that area. Um, All right. And so I'm still getting one person saying that no one can hear. And so I'm telling her, no, it's not no one. It's just you. All right. So what I would do is I would take this address. And because of where this is located, it would probably work. Um, and I would go to my MLS. Right. And I would log into the MLS. And I should have done that first, but it doesn't take very long. I would log into the MLS. Now, RPR will search the MLS. The reason I'm doing it is because it search isn't perfect. So there are times when I find comparables when I look at the MLS, 
that don't appear on RPR. And I'm going to show you what can you do if that happens. So if I'm looking for active, pending, whatever, I'm going to go down here to where it says map search. I'm going to paste in that. It finds the property. I'm going to say I want everything within a half of a mile. And using the status change date, I want everything that's happened in the last 90 days. There's only six. But before I did this, ran a CMA using RPR, I would have looked at this. Because what I want to see is when I run the CMA with RPR, is it going to have the same listings that I found right here? That's what I'm going to see, right? Does it or does it? I don't know. I don't know, right? But I want to do that. Now, the other thing you're going to find is that the, the reason that this is working is because CRMLS, which is where San Clemente is, you can see the CR, um, and those areas are friendly in that they're part of the Real Estate Alliance, right? They're part of our alliance. And so anyhow, um, they're friendly, which means they appear in our MLS, but let's say you want to value a property in Fresno or Eureka or Tahoe, both RPR and your MLS are going to have trouble because those areas, those MLSs do not cooperate, right? And so it's not available, but I'm going to show you how you can still find the comps and put them into RPR. It's still possible. All right. So let's just, um, one of the things that I would do, and I'm going to pick a different property just for fun, but I've clicked and then I'm gonna go back. So here's an off market property. Let me just, this one's already closed, but I'm gonna copy it for purposes of my example, right? I just thought I'd rather do a different one. So there, All right? So I'm gonna put this in. Um, again, I would do this in my MLS too. I would go down here, go to criteria. Um, it's probably not much of a difference. I would put that in, there we go, half of a mile, nine results, okay? So I would, you know, like to see them. Oops, go ahead, run the search. There they are, all right. So let's say I wanted to do a market analysis on 136 West Avenida de los Lobos Marinos, right? Sounds, sounds very poetic. So what this is what I would do first. I mean, I would run and look and see what the MLS says, but then I would be looking at this screen. Now notice that it says an RVM. RVM stands for a Realtors Valuation Model. VMs are valuation models. They're almost all AVMs and AVM stands for Automated Valuation Model. So it sold for 1.6 back when it sold back in 2021, but RPR thinks it's worth 1,802,000. Not bad, right? Not bad for a couple of years. So if I were going to do a market analysis on this property, I would click on view details. Now, what I'm looking for, first of all, I'm looking at this confidence score. And sometimes, especially when the property is not in a major metropolitan area, sometimes the confidence score is one star or something like that. And what that means is RPR has no idea what the properties were, right? They really don't have any idea. When you see five stars, basically what they're saying is, is that if you look this up on Zillow and Redfin and Realtor.com and CoreLogic, they all sort of seem to agree with this range, right? It, it's just sort of how they come up with the different stars. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and I'm interested in looking at these off-market properties. Now, looking at off-market properties can be risky. And the reason they can be risky is because if the property didn't go through the MLS, we don't necessarily know what it looks like. Right, we just don't know because we don't have pictures and things like that. But we do know what it's sold for because that's something that is recorded at the county recorder's office. Now, the reason I'm looking at these, what I'm looking for right now is something that's a really strong match. So this is 1470 square feet, three two built in 1965. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm looking for 
the 14, I don't see it. There's no exact model. All right, 1965-32. Now that could be because this is somewhat semi-custom or it's, there's been, a, you know, they, they built things or whatever. I'm looking for three twos, 1965. Scroll down here. Here's a three two, 1965. It's smaller. That's sort of an issue, but I want to know. I mean, that's something I might want to think about. Um, any other three twos, 1967, a little bit bigger, right? But the numbers seem off. This one is 887 per square foot, and this one is 1,384 per square foot. That's a pretty big difference. And RPR is thinking it's $1,122 a square foot. So we don't know what that other one looked like, so I might not use it because I, I really don't know. I don't know. Right now, here's another one that's kind of close. It's a 3-2 built in 61, 1-3, 1346, kind of close. Now, why am I doing this? Well, when I run the comps, like particularly if I'm running comps using the MLS, it's not going to show off-market properties. Not going to show. And the other thing is, is let's say this was a property in, a, in an uncooperative area. Um, the realtor.com doesn't always get the syndication from the MLS. However, they do get a syndication from the county recorder's office. So some of these properties actually might have been on the MLS, but they don't appear in an MLS search because that MLS does not cooperate with your MLS. But then the county recorder's office is a public record. And what I'm looking for is if I find things that look like a really good match that's off market, I'm going to want to copy those addresses. So let's use, this one is a little smaller, 1384 per square foot. It's, notice, not very far away, 0.11 miles. Yeah, it's on what looks like the same street. It's smaller. I would rather pick one that's a little closer in size. Here's one. That's the one I don't want to use. Here's one, 2.2 eh, miles. The closer, the better. Let's just use this one just for fun's sake. All right. So this, let's say when I'm looking at the, when I'm looking at the off-market properties, what I'm really looking for is to find something that looks like it's a really good match, right? This one. 32, 1965, um, smaller, it doesn't always scale up, but I'm going to just save that, right? And if I were saving it here, I might, um, I might just save it, all right? And I'll show you why. By the way, if I were going to do an open house, and I don't really have time because I'm busy to do a complete CMA on the open house, but I know that somebody might think, you know, to ask me, well, what do you think the property's going to sell for? Or tell me about the comps. What I do is I would just print this RVM and take it with me. All right, I'm not necessarily going to give it to people, but it tells me stuff. Like I could say, well, you know, there is this property on Avenida, oh, same street, right? It's a 3-2. It sold for 1.785. It wasn't in the MLS because it just, right, you see, I understand, I could, it sounds like I actually know something about San Clemente. So that's what I'm doing here. First of all, if I just want something quick to take with me, I might print this out. If I see off-market properties that look like a good fit, I'm going to copy the address, and I'll show you what we would do with it later. All right, so refining the value, I don't really get into that. Um, what refining the value would allow you to do is to move to add improvements and to move these sliders, right? Now, we need to have comparables for this to make any sense. I usually don't bother with that. I usually don't bother with that, but I can show you what, how it works. Let's say we're gonna create a CMA. Sounds good. Now, there's two ways of doing a CMA. One is a comparative analysis, which is a simpler one. The other one is called a sales comparison analysis, and they want you to fill out more stuff. And in RPR's view of the universe, this is something that an appraiser could use. I don't know of any appraisers that use it, 
because they use the standard report, but this the sales comparison is way more detailed, right? But then let's say you haven't seen any of those other properties anyhow. It's very difficult to make determinations as to is it better, is it worse, is it bigger, is it, if you've never even seen the other properties. So we're gonna confirm facts. Now, when it was listed, this is what they said. Now, um, if I know, like let's say this is a listing appointment, and I would always ask before I went on the listing appointment to the seller, can you describe your house to me? And you might think, well, you know, that's silly. We could look it up in the tax records and we know. You'd be surprised at how many times what they describe is not what the tax records show. So they, the tax records say it's a 3-2, but it's really a 5-3. The tax records show that it's 1470 square feet and they say, well, it's 2500 square feet. So what's going on here probably is that they did some work without permits. And so you would want to know that. And so if it was a bigger square footage, you would type it in. If it had more bedrooms and more bathrooms, you would type it in under your changes. Now, there are no dumb questions. That's probably not entirely true, but, but I've been asked many times by real estate, and so if you're thinking this, just it's, it's okay. I've been asked many times by real estate agents, if I make changes in that column, will that change the public record information? And the answer is no, no, right? The county tax assessor is not going to allow you to log into RPR and change what it says. But you understand there may be a mismatch from what the property really has versus what the tax records say. And if we're going to do a CMA, we're going to want to do a CMA. If it's a really a 5'3", 2,500 square feet, we're going to want to do a 5'3", 2,500 square feet. But assuming everything looks good, we would just confirm the facts. Now we're going to find comps. Okay. What I do is I add under contract right under contract is active pending or active it's a form of active but it's a contingent it's contingent right the difference between active contingent and pending is pending they removed their you know contingencies now of course the accuracy of all of this depends upon the listing agent putting in the right information right which is not always the case so what I would also do is I generally would only go back three months. And I, because I'm lazy, I mean time efficient, simply pick the radius tool and I drag it out. And what I'm looking for is the closer the comparable is to the subject property, the more valuable the comparable is. Like an appraiser generally won't go out past a mile unless it's a rural property. They don't want to go out past half of a mile unless they have reasons. So I'm going to search in this area. There we go. All right. And those different circles, this is the sale pending, right? The ones like that, these are for sale and the blocks are recently closed. Now, the ones that are on the other side of the freeway, I'm probably not going to use because I don't know the neighborhood, but oftentimes the other side of the freeway is not the same neighborhood. Right, this is a whole nother conversation. If you're doing a CMA, you ought to go drive and look at the house and drive around the neighborhood so you can see where the neighborhood changes. But let's say we're gonna use this one, right? That's a two, two, I don't like that. Usually what I do is I just scroll down and what I'm looking for are three twos, right? Because I would rather have three twos on a three, two than a two, two or a four, one. Um, Let's see, I sold my home recently and I looked at the tax records. It said two bedrooms when it's actually three bedroom and it's been for 20 years. How do you correct the record? You could write a letter to your tax assessor. You could call the planning department. Um, just because it doesn't show up in the county records doesn't mean somebody did something without permits. It could, or even 20 years ago, right? It often means if there's a difference between the county records and what you're seeing, they didn't have permits, but it's not always the case. This is a government agency. There's a chance they made a mistake. 
So I would prefer finding other three twos. Right? I would prefer finding other three twos. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of them. I'm going to modify the search. I'm going to go back six months. And sometimes I'll put in three bedrooms. I only want to see three bedrooms because, you know, it saves me time. There aren't very many. But, and this one was built a long time before. So, yeah, I, I picked one that isn't as easy. Those little stars, of course, show that it was used in the, um, in, in the automated valuation model. So I'm just picking a few, right? Now, when I'm picking a few, and I'm not saying these are the best comps, I would be maybe expanding the area, going back further. But when I'm looking at this, notice the discrepancy here, 1.45 to 2.4, and the 1.45 million is being brought down by whatever that one is. So I'm gonna go down until I find this one. It's pending. So we don't know what it's sold for, right? We don't know what it's sold for. We do know it was on the market for 64 days. And what it's calculating is the list price. You might call that agent and ask them, what did it sell for? Now look, at here's one for 943. You see how big of a difference they are. I'm gonna just add, because I, I would at least like to have three, right? I would at least like to have three. Um, I had a contractor put an addition years ago, five bedroom in addition, it was inspected for final approval, never changed in the tax roll. Um, I don't want to bring it to my attention. I'm already sharing this, by the way, with the local assessor's a Twitter account, um, but it's up to you, right? When you come time to sell it, um, the buyer can do a permit search. All right, so we found three we can update our valuation and close. Now, these weren't the best comps. That wasn't my, you know, my goal. Adjusting the comps would mean that we know what these other ones look like, right? Because what we've ended up with is a range. And the range is based on the lowest dollars per square foot and the highest dollars per square foot. And how does this property compare to the subject property? Well, let's say it's better, right? It's better. How much better? I don't know. Let's say it's a lot better and maybe this one is worse. Notice what it's doing, it's making adjustments based upon you moving the little sliders. Now, I don't spend a lot, I usually don't do this. Sometimes I do, but usually not. What I would always be saying to the seller, look at these are the comps, right? These are the ones that have sold recently that are in your area. And basically we're gonna look for one, maybe two, that seems to be the closest match and we're gonna base it on that. And it, if, if you follow a strategy of starting low in terms of your pricing so that it creates more of a buzz and people bid up, then that will sell quicker and you'll probably get more money than starting high and coming down. Now, if you can sell people on that idea, then you don't have to hit the number right on the right on the nose. I don't know if that's the right way of putting it, but you don't have to have the exact number, right? Because we're deliberately starting a little bit low. And no matter what we do, if there's appraisal, it's going to have to appraise. But let's say we're not going to bother with that, right? We're not going to, not going to bother, right? Now, what this is saying, this is the average dollars per square foot. We're not going to adjust the comps. And now we're going to create a report. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the different reports. Now, because I'm doing a CMA, because I'm doing a CMA, and this is a property not in the MLS, RPR is going to default to the seller report. If you click on it, it's going to show you all of these things that can be included in the seller report. I unclick a lot of these things. I don't include recent market activity, right? I don't include this or this or this or this or this or this. And I don't usually include this. And even though RPR says you should always tell people that you're, you're using RPR and how great the data is, I don't include any of that. Now, the reason I'm not including these things is this selected recent market activity, excuse me, that one I may include. 
Um, but all these market activity ones, not the selected ones, but all these other market activity ones, what they're essentially doing in all of those is they're taking the zip code and just dumping in all of the active listing spending sales that are in that zip code. Now, the reason I don't include that in a CMA is because it makes the CMA like 90 pages long. Also, what will happen is that the client is going to start looking at some of these and they're going to say, hey, look at this one. Wow, that one sold for, you know, $1,500, $1,800 a square foot. Why don't we price it like that? And then you have to say, well, that's just a sale. It's not really a comparable, but it just was included in the report. And then the client says, so why did you, why did you give it to me to look at? if you don't want me to use it on basing my decision? Why, why did you give it to me? I don't have a good answer for that, other than it's a default setting in the report. So I don't want them to see everything in the neighborhood. Now, you might want to look at all that, because sometimes what clients will say is, well, I heard that the guy over there he sold one like mine and he got this much, right? Well, if you included all that, you could you could see it yourself, but I, I don't load up the I don't load up the, the, the I don't load it up with all that stuff. All right, so here I you can suppress estimated value for the subject property. I learned that I want the client to say what they think their property is going to sell for before I do. So when I'm on the phone talking to them, I'm going to say, what do you think you're probably like to sell for? And I've had people say, I'm not going to tell you. You have to come and tell me, you know, that's the game. When I get there, I'll ask them, what, you know, you've been paying attention to the market. And what do you think you're probably, I, I want them to say, right? And if I can get them to say in, in, in advance, that's great. Now, if we let the automated valuation model or our, our estimate put in a value, Mm -hmm. then what that's going to do is um, maybe they're going to say, wow, 1.8, that's wonderful, right? I also will sometimes suppress the estimated value for the comps because if I'm going in a listing appointment, I haven't even necessarily seen the property and I don't really know which of the comps it kind of looks like. And I might even suppress the refined value, but that's if you're moving things back and forth, which we didn't do. So assuming I like all this, I can either just run it, which creates a PDF with a link, with the URL, or I could email it to them. I usually, if this is a listing, just, I just let it generate a report. All right. And then what's that going to do? Notice that it's up here, it's running the report. Um, we're going to let it do that. All right. We're going to let it do that. Property search. Let's say my client would like to make an offer. I like this one. I like the number on this one. Let's say, so I'm, I'm, we're going to go back and I'm going to show you what the report looks like, but that's what I would do for a CMA. Now, if I'm seeing properties that are in the MLS that are not here, not in RPR. Let me go back to that. If I'm finding properties that are not in RPR, but the MLS has them as a closed sale and they look like they're comparables, I copy that address. I, I copy the address. And the reason I copy the address, I should have shown this when I got there, but when I get to the comps, notice one of my choices is when I go here and search for comps, one of my choices is add a known property. See that? Add a known property. So sometimes, let's say I, somebody wants to know what a property is worth in Fresno. Fresno is not a friendly MLS. Right? They don't syndicate. Some of them do not send their stuff even to RPR. And Tahoe is another one. Right? Try to find properties in RPR in Tahoe. They're not, you know, Tahoe just sort of gives everyone. What they want you to do is refer it to one of their agents or join their board of realtors. But if I go to Redfin, which is a member of all the MLS, I go to Zillow, 
or I just am looking at properties that have been recorded, I'm going to find some other addresses. And so I'm th th these aren't necessarily real, but let's say this property, this property is in the MLS, but um, let's just say it wasn't showing up in RPR and I wanted to use it as a comp, I would paste it in. And when I do that, it would add it to the comp. Remember when I was looking at the, uh, is this one over here already now? Remember when I was looking at the public record sale um, in the realtor's valuation model and I copied an address, right? This is a non MLS property. When I add it here, notice it's going to pop it in. Now, now we've got, <laughs> Uh, a big range, and one of these is way off, obviously, in terms of the value. I'm not really too sure which one, 1 1.7. This one is weird. I don't know what it is. I'm going to get rid of it. All right. So anyhow, it's giving me a tighter range. So if you can find a comparable that didn't go through the MLS, which you could get through looking at what's closed recently in the neighborhood, by looking at county recorder's information, or you borrowed it from one of the comps that Redfin or Zillow has, you can add it. Now, we, it doesn't have all the pictures, but it does know the what it's sold for and the dollars per square foot, right? It does know that, right? And uh, yeah, I don't really care. No, you don't really care. So let's go back. We're gonna write an offer. I have a client that wants to write an offer oops, on this property. I wish I did. Right. So we're leaving the buyers. I mean, excuse me, we're leaving sellers. And now you have a buyer, right? In terms of RPR, there's other reports and things like that. I, I don't really see people care as much about it. But um, I, for sellers, I typically just use the CMA because this makes a very nice looking CMA. And I'm going to show you how to even make things look better. So let's say we want to write an offer on this property. Bam, there it is, right? There's 15 photos, looks nice. Um, see, sub, this is a lease, didn't like that. Let me go back. All right, that, it's a sold property. All right, let me go back. I remember what I'm doing wrong because I was looking for comps. All right, I'm going to just go out two miles. Come on. All right, I'm just, I'll pick something completely different where I know that there's a lot of stuff for sale. So let's say I'm in the beautiful city of Morgan Hillbilly and I'm Morgan Hill Gilroy. So here's Morgan Hill. All right. And here's a nice starter home in Morgan Hill. So let's say I would like to write an offer on this property. Now, rather than copying the address and going back and doing a search, what you're going to see, and, and, and it's in different places depending upon your MLS software, but you see there's these little icons under the map. And that one there ought to look familiar, right? Because if we click on it, that's an RPR icon. So there it is, right? First time home buyer, pro, you know, um, listed. Now, notice it says, why no estimate? I'm going to pick a different property because this isn't going to work. Why no estimate? I know why there's no estimate because where it's located is such that nobody's going to be able to, you, you can't really, let me pick something that looks, this one looks like you might be able to, all right. All right. No, no, you guys are just, you're killing me. You're killing me. All right, so um, next. Let me look at the list. Criteria previous. Oh, I'm going to go over here. Say I want agent one line. Pick something where I know there will be comps. Morningstar. All right. 
Now, I mean, I need to do that. I'm going to click on RPR and hopefully it's going to load. Yes. All right. So let's say my buyer wants to make an offer on 1301 Morningstar Drive, right? Uh, a fixer upper probably. Notice there's, again, it's got an RVM versus the list price. Now, not a big difference, right? Not a big difference. So it's likely that they are pricing it just a little bit low. I might look at this again. I'm just interested in seeing what off-market properties there might be, but that's only if we don't have enough closed ones. But look at all these. We've got plenty of them that are closed. So if I were representing a buyer, what I would do from this is I would go up to um, create a report, which is in the top right, right up here. Create a report. And when I click on it, I'm going to want to create a property report. Let me go back. I'll, I'm going to do a CMA first. Sorry about that. Sorry. It's been a long day. I'm going to create a CMA. I'm going to confirm the facts. All looks good to me. What do I know? All right. I'm going to find comps. I'm going to include active under contract. I'm not going to show all because I don't, it's, I don't really care. I might only go back three months. You'll notice there's a pattern to what I do. I'm going to go to radius. I'm going to drag it out. Maximum usually of a half of a mile. I wouldn't go further unless there was something, there wasn't anything there. Right? Wow. We got plenty. So scrolling down, first I make sure it's a 432017 is the year built. I'm looking for four threes. Here's a four four. 2019, a 43, 2017. Look at that. That's 24, 24 square feet, 28. That's pretty close. I'm looking for other 43s. There's a 44, an extra bedroom. May or may not add value. It all depends on, you know, all depends. Here's a 43, but 2007, yeah, I don't know, right? But what I would be doing, here's a 33, that's kind of small. So I'm going to just go with these. I'm just going to go with these. Now, when I create a report, I'm going to use the property report. And this is what I would provide to somebody who's going to write an offer. And notice I've taken, whether or not you want to include the property history is up to you. Financing, distressed information, map layers. I neighborhood housing stats and things like that. You'll notice a lot of it I didn't include. Sometimes buyers aren't familiar with the neighborhood. School summary and school reviews. Ah, okay. So distressed information would show, right now we don't have a lot of that, but um, that's sort of the boxes. Um, I might suppress the estimated value because again, people will see it and they'll think that that's accurate and it may not be. The school reviews, one of the reports that you can run is a school report, but you have to be careful because does RPR really know what the schools are for that particular property? And the answer is no, they really don't know. So how do they pick the schools that they're going to give you information on? They do it by geography, nearby schools, which if you've been in the business long enough, you probably know that just because a house is nearer to one middle school than another middle school, it does not necessarily mean that that's the middle school that people go to from that house. How would you figure that out? You have to talk to the school district, but we're going to run a report. Now, if this was somebody, and when I write offers, by the way, I usually create a spreadsheet for all the properties we've showed, I've showed, and I include the link to the report, but I would email this to my buyers, right? I would usually email it to them so that they can see the comps before we write the offer, right? Because they're going to want you to say, well, what are the comparables? I use the property report to do that, right? That's the one I use. And if we put in their email address and you also want to be copied and hit it, out it'll go. And now they have an idea of what's going on, right? If there's disclosures, I send it to them. And, and by the way, sometimes I do this even before I show properties. Like if I know I'm showing four properties this weekend, I would run these reports before I'm showing the properties because 
buyers have this 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 annoying habit of saying, so what are the comps for this neighborhood? What do you think the property is worth? Right, and if you're like, I don't know, I don't know, you know, I mean, we were just going to look at it first, and then if you liked it, then I was going to figure it out. That doesn't look as good, right? Doesn't look as good. But so I oftentimes will do this before I show the properties, send it to them. They have more information than they want, probably. But all of this, yeah. And by the way, this link up here is a URL, the one up here in the address bar that you could share. So let's say I'm going to start with this. I'm going to show this property Sunday. Right? I'm busy on Saturday. So let's say Sunday, I'm going to show this property at 10 o'clock. So I would guesstimate maybe 30 minutes. I would add that in. I would add my clients to it. When it comes to location, I would add that in. And then when I've saved it, right, when I've saved it, if I click on it and I want to edit it, notice one of the things that I can do, I can attach a file. Huh? See that? I can insert a link. So that document, this one up here, I can put that actually in, in the calendar invite, right? And I could do that on every one. I could also attach the file, but I'd have to download the file, but I could attach the file. I usually just do the link, right? So that means that they have, you know, they have access to it. And if there's disclosures, I could include that link. And notice in Google, I could take notes about the property, right? Like, do you like it, do you not like it, and things like that, which uh, I'm, I'm going to delete this because unfortunately, I'm not showing that property. All right. The other thing that I would recommend that you do when you're showing property, wrong, wrong. Um, go back here. So let's say I want to go back to Morningstar Drive, right? If I click on that, it'll take me back. If I go where it says my work, notice it shows my listings, my market areas, my saved properties, my recent properties, my reports, that sort of stuff. So if I were going to really be showing this property, I would click on the save button, right? I'm really not going to do that because I'll just have to undo it. And the reason I'm going to click on the save button is because on RPR mobile, one of the choices is to look at saved properties. So I clear it out. So if I've got four properties I'm going to show, I'm going to make sure all of them are saved on my phone. So I've got RPR mobile on my phone. And so while I'm at the house, rather than taking pieces of paper that describe the property and how old it is and all that other kind of stuff, Rather than doing that, I have RPR on my phone. And all I have to do is click on the button that says Save Properties. It shows me the Save Properties. Morningstar Drive is one of the Save Properties. I click on it. And now that they're asking me questions about it, I have that information on my phone. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, what else? Um, reports, you know, I've watched their, their stuff. But by their stuff, I mean RPRs, trainings, and things like that. And they're always, oh, you could post it on Facebook, right? Run a neighborhood analysis and post it on Facebook. Uh, it, it, first of all, does not look very good, right? It doesn't look very good. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's say this is a neighborhood summary. Where am I? Morgan Hill, California, right? Doesn't this look nice? I don't know. Not terrible. Right, you understand this is not a bad little report. By the way, if you wanted to post something on Facebook, what I would be doing is taking screenshots of this, right? I'd be taking screenshots and then sharing. I wouldn't include that. I would just take screenshots. This is on Express Offers. These are nice little charts and things like that. But what, what um, RPR things we ought to do is to share it on Facebook, which doesn't really look that good. If you create a report, 
you can share the report. But sharing this link isn't going to help you because unless they are members of the Association of Realtors, they can't see it. But I'll show you what it means. Let's say I were going to, here's a report I ran, and this is what's called a market activity report, right, for Morgan Hill. Let me run a second one just for fun. We're gonna go back up here and I'm gonna type in Morgan Hill. I'm gonna try and spell it. I'm gonna keep trying to spell it, Morgan Hill, California. All right, and let's say I wanna create a report. Um, somebody wants Monica. What do you want me to do with this, Monica? Do you want me to run a market analysis on it? Monica is giving me, we only have a short period of time. Yes, please. You understand if I paste that in the, uh, everybody's gonna wanna run and they're gonna wanna try and list it if it's not listed. All right, so Monica, this will be quick. Let me just go back before I do this. So a market activity report and a neighborhood report has all sorts of housing stats and stats and things like that. I wouldn't post this on Facebook because it, it doesn't look very good and it's kind of long, right? But Monica has a request. I always do what Monica wants. So I'm gonna do, she'd like to know what this property is worth. This is what I do, it looks beautiful. I would go here 920, create a CMA, confirm the facts. Um, this doesn't look like it's on the MLS. Monica, is this on the MLS? Hello? Is it on the MLS? Not yet. You understand all these agents are gonna drive over to Castro Valley and pound on the door and say, let me list your home, don't let Monica do it. But anyhow, I know them, I know them, right? They're somewhere on the ring. So we're gonna find comps, include active, start with three months, draw a shape, make it a radius, drag it out, don't go more than half of a mile. The closer, the better. Remember, location, location, location. We hit that. Nothing right next to it. That's always, whenever people suggest one for me to do, there's always nothing right next to it. But what I'm doing is I'm looking at this information here. It's, it's 1,075 square feet. It's a 2-1 built in 51. So now I'm, first of all, I'm just looking. Here's a 3-1 built in. I'm looking for things that were built about the same time. I only see one. 1948 isn't too far, but notice here's a 2 1, but it's 1938. Ah, uh, you're killing me, Monica. Here's a 3 2. Here's a 2 1. Now, a 2 2, but 19, I, I don't know, 47 maybe. We have to go to it. I would much rather be including, if it's a 2 1, just two ones. But there's an extra bedroom. Look at this, look at the size, not, I want it to be. Square footage, dollars per square foot does not scale. So if you look at the dollars per square foot for a thousand square foot house, and you're valuing a 1500 or 2000 square foot house, that won't scale. And usually the smaller the property is, the higher the dollars per square foot. So we want to find comps that are roughly the same size. Here's one for 1200, 100, 1150. This one, you know, and I'm also, what I'm doing this is I'm peeking at what these numbers are for dollars per square foot, right? Just to get a range. Here's one a little bit smaller, right? You, you don't want to do too many. You want to have at least three. It's good to have three actives, three pendings, and three solds. That would be good. But I don't see, we have three solds and we have more than three pendings. Um, the pendings are what is the competition? I don't really want to do too many of them. Usually my, you know, they might have already seen it, but these are the, the three pendings. This is it. Now, again, without looking at the MLS and looking at the pictures, because this is what I tell agents to do before you go look at this house, look at the pictures of the ones that are active and are in the MLS. If they're really active and not contingent or pending, why don't you go and, sh and look at them, preview them, right? So this is giving, and notice this is a range. It's a big range. How did it get 895? It just took the middle number, right? But the range 
in that neighborhood from the comps that I selected was a low of 776 to a high of one point, let's say a million. That's a pretty decent sized range. So how would we know if the subject property is in the middle or the top or the bottom? We have to go look at it and we have to look at what the other properties look like on the MLS and then say to ourselves, well, I don't know. It looks more like this one than it does that one. Usually, sometimes I have found there's only like one good comp, one sale in the neighborhood, similar kind of property, same age, same square footage, roughly maintained one good comp. Now, if you do the pricing strategy of starting low so that we can sell it high, rather than the needle in the haystack, start high, wait three months and decide we've, we've blown it and then go low. If you start low, you don't have to know the exact number. You don't have to know the exact number. And if the buyer is going to make an offer contingent upon it appraising, it doesn't, it's got to appraise, right? But then we would create a report. Seven cats and five people live there. That's better than seven people and five cats, maybe. So here's the seller report. I always click on this to make sure it's not including stuff I don't want. All right, it may not. Now, one of the other things I just want to show you before we bring our lovely time together at an end, over here on the right, there's something that says manage custom pages. So those of you that have a listing presentation, you have a marketing plan right? You have all that stuff. Some of it is stuff your company gave you. By the way, eXp has all that stuff. I usually don't use it, right? Because what, what, what I found is that most sellers are interested in what are you going to do to sell my house? But let's say I have a hopefully portrait style um, listing presentation, marketing plan, all that kind of stuff. What I can do is I can actually upload those things. I don't really have any of them on this handy. I can upload them and then I can attach them. See, if I had uploaded them, let me just pick something that's generic. How about, uh, how about a copy? I'm sure you guys would like this of the Business and Professions Code, right? Isn't that something, it's, 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 it's just, you know, reading. If I do that and we click on save, I'm gonna have to get rid of it. What's going to happen is you'll notice over here, there's a custom page. So you can upload, and, and even for buyers, right? If you have a buyer consultation, you have, you have all this stuff, this is what I'm gonna do to help you with the buyer. If you overdo it, not everybody wants to read all this stuff. Right? We think, oh, it's magic that I've got all this stuff and I can put it in. Not everybody wants to see it. But if you want to have that stuff so that it's all done in one package, then you can add the custom pages. And I'm going to manage the custom pages and I'm going to get rid of my copy of the business and professions code. It's what I read at night when I can't sleep. Um, do we need the market activity part of the report? It's super long. No, I usually do not do the market activity report. And the reason I don't do it, it's a dump of everything that's happened in the zip code going back 30 days. Things that are comparable, things that aren't comparable. The only value of the market activity report is if you were to, and this is Castro Valley, what you might want to do, and this is for you, right? Something I might take with me, but not necessarily attach it. And what I might do is I'm going to create a report and I'm going to create, there's a market activity report. It's 26 pages. Why would I want to run that report but not give it to the client? Because it shows everything that's happened in that zip code in the last 30 days. And when they start saying, well, I heard that the guy two blocks over got X amount, right? It's good to have that with you. I went on a listing appointment. And I'd done a really good CMA, I thought, I thought. And I show up, this is a one story, three, two. 
I show up and right next door, right next door, there's a list right next door. And it's a two bedroom, I mean, two, a two story, much bigger house. I did not, I was showing the property. I did not run those comps, right? I did not run them because I wasn't sure my client didn't want a house like that. But at that point, this was, you know, I didn't have RPR on my phone, searching the MLS on my phone. I was like, oh, God. And I knew that the first thing he would say is, what's that listed for? Right? What's that listed for? Now, if you have RPR on your phone, it's a GPS-based system. It would tell you, oh, there's a listing right there, and this is what it is. So I looked it up, right, because I did not want him to, I did not want to show that I didn't know. Right, so um, I don't, um, so the market activity report gives you an idea of what's going on in a market, but it's really, really long and I don't usually give it to clients. Even the neighborhood report, some of that stuff is included in the seller report. The seller report could easily, notice it says approximately 81 pages, Whew. right? Most people don't want you to send them 81 pages. They want to know what is my house gonna sell for? Right? How much commission are you going to charge? Right? How long do you, what do I need to do to get it ready? And by the way, all of that stuff, what do you need to do to get your house ready? All that generic stuff, you can create custom pages, upload them, and include them with your reports. All right. How did I do today? Was that more than you wanted to know? Enough? What I might do, if there's, you guys may be able to say yes or no. Um, is the, one of the things that, let me just go back. And uh, I may do this as a, as a fun thing. Let's say somebody wanted to buy Morningstar Drive. I'll pick on, I don't want to keep picking on uh, Monica's. And they wanted to buy this. This doesn't look like a fix and flip, but let's say they wanted to do a fix and flip. That's this program called Valuate. If somebody wanted to buy multifamily or commercial property and they wanted a valuation, that would be it. By the way, if I'm going to do, I, I'm going to have to borrow Monica's again. So Monica, let's say you were going to fill out the Morningstar is not in the MLS, right? No, 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 wrong one, wrong one. Morningstar is in the MLS. The other one, uh in castro valley is not on the mls so how would i get what limited information is about this property into zip forms you see that woof right where it says transactions if i click on connect what it's going to do is it's going to ask me do i want to start a new zip forms transaction right i'm not going to go through the process but what it will do and it's not perfect is it will import what's in the county records into the MLS so I don't have to type everything. And maybe I'll do another class that shows you what is this commercial button for? And because I do commercial real estate as well and I have people on my team and how could that help me? Uh, and how do you use the evaluate program, right? How, how do you need to do that? All right, that's all I got. You guys have worn me out. Have a great day, everybody. Um, that's all I got. Bye.